So let me show you what this looks like. In fact, the whole reason we started squirting paint out right on our table here was to show the true mixing characteristics of traditional artist pigments like alizarin crimson. And as you can see right away, it's very deep, it's transparent. But what's really interesting about it is how warm the top tone is, even though this is a very cool mixing red. Let me demonstrate that with some white. This is our lead white, which is going to give you a warm tint. It's going to hold on to the deep value of the alizarin and show a little uh, dimension there. The titanium zinc white, of course, is going to push. Being a stronger white, it's going to give you a lighter tint. It's going to push the blueness of the undertone of the alizarin. But one thing I want you to see very clearly with both of these tints of alizarin crimson is how natural it looks. They're um, very old world in character, beautiful dusty pink. There's nothing too much, uh, too bright that would pop out at you. And that's why alizarin crimson has traditionally been used in portrait painting for adjusting flesh tones, push them a little cooler. In fact, you can even create a flesh tone just with alizarin. Now, the, the basic flesh skin color that you will get will be on the cool side. It'll give you a real classical feel because alizarin is so cool mixing. Let me put some white in here. And and there you can just um, go with this or adjust it further. The other way you can use alizarin is to make violets. It is a cool red. So adding uh, the warm ultramarine blue, which is also very dark in value, is a good mix. It's going to give you a great deep purple um, because of the deep value of alizarin crimson and also the alizarin the ultramarine blue wants to go very dark as well. And now you have a deep purple without having to add black to it. Speaking of black, you can, and I know this is something that you probably already know, you can use alizarin crimson with its complement. Here is thalo green. And make a black for your palette. And of course it will be very dark in value and be quite readable as a dark neutral. Or you can go the other way with alizarin and make oranges from it. The only thing is when you uh, put this into a yellow, it, it is going to give you kind of a burnt orange because of the deep value of the alizarin. On the other hand, you could take advantage of that and mix it into our Indian yellow, which is already kind of earthy but quite vibrant. And the transparency of the alizarin allows a lot of that vibrancy of the modern Indian yellow pigment to really shine through. But lastly, I want to share with you my favorite mix, and that's with our manganese violet. This is a beautiful gem-like mineral color. It's much cooler and more opaque than, than the alizarin crimson. But that alizarin is going to give it some translucency and warm it up into a beautiful, warm, almost purple lake. It's nice and dark and rich, but warm and still quite violet. So there you have it. These are just some of the many possibilities that I have found in mixing with alizarin crimson. I'm sure you will enjoy discovering a few of your own.